Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Today, I want to talk about how you can sell your house on your own for the maximum amount. A lot of people try to reduce the most amount, the biggest expenses they have, which is smart, as long as it makes sense. You need to position yourself and know the skills that is needed in order to move forward. So um, I'm telling you that it's possible for you to sell your house on your own. It does work. You're going to hear other agents tell you that it doesn't work. Now, when we, we can look at statistics later, but you need to do it properly. There's certain techniques that are going to help you with this. This is not legal. This is not financial advice. I'm here to help you with your goals, what you want for you and your family. So if, there's four big points to this. One, you have to understand the selling process. The second one is you have to understand how to position your marketing to capture the most amount of people. You want to price your home correctly and then i'm going to get, i'm going to give you tips for a smooth sale the more properties you do uh the more you see that there's trends and things that are going to make life a little bit easier so for sale by owners there's going to be a, a couple of main steps and the first one is determine your pricing and your strategy and you want to make sure that you're the obvious choice for the neighborhood you want people to come in so you have as much competition as possible that's what drives the price up you're going to prepare your home for the marketing. So this can be the pictures, it can be the websites, this can be all the other stuff, but make sure that the home itself is prepared so we can tour and we can do, go ahead and do a showings after. So showings comes up, make sure after the showings you call and you find out, um, you know, what's your honest opinion of the house we want to know. So that way you can see if there's a common recurring issue with your home. The other thing that we're going to do once we see that, you're going to review all the offers. And if you have an attorney that's helping you with this, perfect. You can go ahead and accept an offer. Or if you have a real estate agent, they can help you out as well, which you're going to be selling on your own. So likely you'll just send it to the title company and get it executed. So now there's three big parts to this. There's the inspection, there's the appraisal, and the financing contingency. Those are the three big areas in any home sale. The inspection, we want to make sure that they only bring up the, the major items. If you disclose this up front, it's gonna save you a lot of issues and negotiation tactics later. The appraisal is so that way the bank justifies the money that they're lending out. They need to ensure that that money is as safe as possible. So, and this needs to happen before they go ahead and send it into underwriting for approval. So in the underwriting process, the most important thing is that the buyers need to submit their documents as soon as possible. So that way they're still within the financing contingency. But once the loan gets approved and you get the, the commitment, you're good to close. And closing can be in person or it can be remotely. So you can go ahead and choose in person. You can also just go and sign the docs different days once everything is filled out. Now, in order to understand the process, Jose, great. You need to use a couple of forms. The as is residential contract for real for sale and purchase. The one that was revised in October of 21 is the most recent home, uh, the most recent contract you're gonna use for the purchase of property. You want to complete the disclosures that are appropriate to your home. The seller's property disclosure, the lead base paint if the home was built before 1978, the an association disclosure, special taxing district. So if you live in Coral Gables, uh, city of Miami, somewhere where there's special taxes and if flood insurance is required. You also, this is very important, include what you want to be included and excluded from the home sale. So later it doesn't become an issue. The contracts have certain staples in there, but if there's something you really want to take, make sure you include it. Comparing offers. So on the as is contract, there's going to be a couple of things that you want to make sure these are the elements that will pivot you from one offer to the other. If there's a pre approval and a proof of funds and a desktop underwriting. So, this is the DU. This means that this person has completely undergone the entire financial background. Uh, earnest money deposit this is how much money they're going to be willing to put on the line in case they breach the contract. Timeline for closing. You know, how soon will you need to close? The inspection period, how long will inspection take? Uh, appraisal, if they go ahead and they include it, are they going to waive it? Are they going to come up with a, uh, you know, with the gap if there is a gap? And then funding, if there's going to be a loan commitment or anything there. Post-occupancy, 
is if you need to close on it and live in the property after, that is called post-occupancy. So you might need to have that as well. Now, to prepare for the marketing, declutter common areas. This is what's going to make your house look good. It's proven that you get a better return on your investment the more people you get in. And that is through professional pictures, getting those nice big pictures with wide angle lens makes the house look much bigger and you get more people in through the door. And you also want to advertise a showing schedule. So you're going to show Mondays from five to seven and Saturdays from 11 to two. That we're, we're, that those are the times we're going to show. So that way you don't get bombarded with calls all the times. And if you want to, you can even set up a, an email with the address of the home, 4602 Southwest Miller Heights area, and put, put it on the sign. So when people reply to the email, they get an automatic reply with all the details of the house, the asking price, all that stuff. This is one of the bigger ones. Make sure that you are upfront about all the issues with the home. So that way negotiation tactics don't happen after the fact. This is very common, especially for for sale, for, for sale by owners because they get targeted a lot by investors. Investors are the ones who are looking to make a profit. So if they see there's not a lot, a lot of competition, not a lot of eyes there, they will come in and put in an offer that's all cash and then try to uh, negotiate it down. Meanwhile, you're going through this emotional strain and it's wasting your time. So be upfront about all those disclosures and you can even include a pre-listing inspection. You can spend the money up front, show it to them and say, hey, this is how we're selling the house as is, okay? There's no kind of, it just positions you a little bit better. So yeah, I recommend a pre-inspection, uh, a, pre a floor plan, so that way they can measure out their furniture and a video walkthrough. It's gonna have people look at the layout beforehand and say, okay, I don't like this layout or okay, I can work with this layout instead of having more people come in through the house. With the technology we have today, there's no reason to not do it. Marketing, know the points of interest in your area. So if someone from, if an investor from New York, California, uh, Texas, they want to go ahead and invest in the house, they know what's nearby or what they can advertise if they wanna put it on Airbnb. Things like that. So that way that you get as many people as informed as possible with it. Uh, you have to know your bedrooms and home square footage. So bedrooms don't require closets. You need to know that. There's a difference between dens, bedrooms. Um, they need to have a window. They need to have at least 5.7 square feet. They need to have uh, uh, at least 70 to 80 square feet in, diam in diameter. The um, one way, one horizontal way needs to be at least seven square feet. So you need to know what constitutes as a bedroom and what do doesn't, because when it comes time for an appraisal, that might shoot you down. You might actually have a two, two instead of a three, two. And the comparables are very different. Um, know your ideal client and where to reach them. So who is likely going to purchase this home? Is it someone throughout the neighborhood? Is it a, another person in my, in my condo studio? Is it going to be an outside investor because this really needs a lot of work? Um, so know who the client is and then try to find out where are they, these people located. Um, and sometimes there's Facebook groups for investors or fixer uppers or wholesale. So, so it's good to know. Now, where do buyers come from? Uh, they've did some research on this and I'll show you the study later. It's with CoreLogic. Uh, most of the properties that were sold were with a salesperson, an agent with some kind of representation. 20% of the people found it through a for sale sign. So they drove through the neighborhood, they saw the for sale sign and they put in a bid, they, do all, they did all this stuff. So make sure you have a for sale sign because it's a big percentage. Everything else is a little bit different. So responded to an ad, but purchased a different home. So, they, you know, so they're going through Facebook, they're going through Zillow, they're going through their areas. Uh, responded to an open house, saw a different home, referred. So focus on these, on the big ones, because that's where you're going to really find your buyers. Now, CoreLogic, which is who controls the MLS and everything, they did a study and they found that there was some correlation between the description that's put on a property versus the sales price and the days on market, how long a property goes from for sale to sold. They found out that these homes, these words that I'm about to put out 
have a lower sales price and a higher days on market. Motivated seller, that tells the buyer that they're desperate. Good location, if it's good, you don't need to go ahead and say it. It's vacant, well, what's, who's been there? Who's been taking care of that house? Rehab and repairs. Uh, I wonder what was the condition of the home. Major renovation, you know, things like that. It's a good buy. You don't need to tell someone if it's a good buy, if it really is. Now, some of the ones that you can still use these descriptions and it counteracts it is freshly updated, right? So this was freshly updated instead of it went through a major overhaul. It's a cozy home if it's small. Vibrant atmosphere if it's in a very loud area in the, in the middle of the city. Um, good, amazing, and excellent. Don't use it. Be specific as possible with what it is, okay? Now, pricing your home. The biggest mistake, especially for sale by owners make, is that they think of for sale as sold. You want to use comparables that are sold because that's what the appraisal is also going to use. Yes, you need to understand what is for sale in the neighborhood. But if you really need to sell this house, you don't want to be having it based off the active properties. You want to have it based off the sold because that's where you're going to have more people come in and be serious. They, they know that they're going to be able to get a loan on this property and the appraisal is going to come in fine. So understanding the competition, absolutely. Need to know what was sold so the appraiser will go ahead and weigh it and what's closer is going to have more weight um and then they're going to use price as a marketing price so what this means is that you want to make sure that you capture everyone if you price your house at 499 900 you are missing out on a lot of different buyers buyers will typically go and especially in the mls They'll, they'll tell us, hey, I need, I need to, especially when they're a motivated buyer, that they need to buy something immediately. And they've been tracking homes for a while. They'll say, hey, I need something between 500 and 550. Maybe you can look at uh, 575. If you're priced at 499, you're, it's, it, you lost it. That person doesn't show up. So if now your property really should be priced at 450 and you're putting it at 499, put it at 450. The idea is you want to get as much traffic and competition as possible. So that way, ultimately, you have as many offers competing and it drives up the price. So what I mentioned before is called price bracketing. You want to make sure that you go in chunks of 50, 25,000. So that way you capture those people who are looking for those homes. Um, so important to know, too, who holds the bargaining power? And as inventory prices go down, prices go up. And as demand goes up, prices go up because there's more demand. So what you need to know is that we're currently in a seller's market. It's not always going to be in the seller's market. And the way that it's measured is by months of inventory. So the more properties there are on the market the, and the less buyers, it's obviously going to be a buyer's market. So the way that it's measured by months is a neutral market should have between six to seven months of inventory. So if no other property went for sale, that between six to seven months, all the properties would be sold. Now, it's called the absorption rate also. Anything above that seven months is a buyer's market. Anything below the six months is a seller's market. You know, we've been, we've been working on it about um, uh, 1.7 months of inventory and it's slowly been creeping up is what we've been seeing over and over. The statistics you need to know in your area, the number of properties for sale, What's the average price? What's the average price per square foot? Determine your range. What's the highest one that's sold and the lowest one that's sold? And what's the average days on market? How long can you expect the property to go from for sale to sold? Remember, your goal is to get offers. If you don't get offers, you're not going to have it sold. Now, tips and recommendations. Make sure you target motivated buyers. You're going to have four different kinds of buyers in every single transaction. You're going to have the looky-loos. Looky-loos are people who come up, they look at the property, they say that you're going to hear from them, and they completely disappear. They have no intention of buying. They're just looking at properties, and you don't know really what their, you know, what their end game is. 
You're also going to have first time home buyers. You're going to see people walk in. They're going to walk in with their parents. They're very nervous. They don't know the, the system. They usually work with agents because they want to make sure that they're protected. And they will sometimes come up with more, um, uh, more hassles if they're using uh, uh, FHA or they have more, more requirements because they're not familiar with the, with the process. Then you have investors. Investors are looking to get the price as low as possible. And they'll say, hey, I'll pay you cash. We'll close in 10 days. Uh, and they're, they, they're trained to get the lowest price possible. So they make the most amount of profit. And they usually are the ones who target for sale by owners. And you have motivated buyers. These are people who their lease is up. They're being relocated. And they will go out on a weekend and see 20, 30, 40 properties and put in a bunch of bids so that way they can buy one. And these people are usually more qualified, but they have less time. So make sure that you target that branch, the motivated buyers. Buyers would rather save money and do their own upgrades. So if you are thinking about renovating the house, don't go crazy because the buyers are gonna want to do it their way. And also keep in mind, there's a cap to every neighborhood. Just because you spend $30 million of gold and all these luxurious items in your home doesn't mean that you're going to be able to sell your house for $30 million in a neighborhood where the maximum it's selling for is $800,000. Just keep that in mind. There's a cap. Upfront inspection and disclose. Make sure that you do the inspection beforehand. You do the disclosure to position yourself the best you can. Creating sh Create a showing schedule to make your life easy and everyone be on the same page. And remember, you want to have multiple offers. So that way you can choose and you can let everyone know we're not, there's no lying here. We have multiple offers. Go ahead, submit your highest and best offer and expect a lot of realtors to call you and tell you that you're doing the wrong thing. That's what uh, we do. Now, goals is to have the best price with the fewest hassles in the time frame that you desire. So that's what you want. So go sell your house. You have all the tools to do this. You know the description. You know how to price. You know marketing. And the market is in your favor. If for some reason, 30, 60 days go by and your home doesn't sell, what can you do after? And that's where we can talk a little bit more to, I can, so I can show you what options you have. I have a flexible pricing schedule that will help you. And you can sell your house on your own and still put it on the MLS. So if you are interested in that, go ahead and reach out to me. My contact info will be below, or you can call me directly at 786-925-5924.